Hi, my name is Harvey Williams, Jr., and I am an amateur wildlife and nature photographer. Uh, I first became interested in photography around the age of 10 when I was living in the country with my, uh, with my aunt and my uh, uncle. I was the only child out there, and my friends got to be just nature itself, the birds, and you know, I enjoy walking through the woods, and it's really where I connected with God at a very early age. Uh, I began the, my interest in photography started around about the age, around the age of 10 when I uh, purchased a instrumentic camera that I purchased through the uh, Some Coming Book ad, and I just took an interest in photography, you know, and the, the camera was cheap, I think maybe a dollar and 25 cents or something, but then the film, I will often have to wait for, you know, to get, be able to get film and to get the film developed. Uh, it's hard time, so it, that wasn't easy, but I, I did manage to hold on to some of those uh, uh, photos, those images of me and my siblings uh, from the early 60s. Uh, somewhere around 2013, I believe it was, that I became interested in, I started uh, photographing uh, landscapes, and I was interested in sunsets, sunrises, uh, lake and pond scenes, and something about the water that I really enjoyed. Uh, but I was taking photos then with my, my camera uh, phone. So in 2019, I was on Banks Lake over in Lanier County. I was standing on the uh, on a picnic table and uh, taking photo, you know, photographing the cypress in the, in the water. And uh, as I had been doing for quite some time since about 2013, I believe, or 15. But anyway, I heard I hear this voice. Uh, Hold that pose. And I'm st as I'm standing there with the camera and everything, you know, taking pictures and that. There's a, a, a photographer, and he's taking my picture, and I thought that was cool. I, I thought that that's the image in my mind of me standing up on that picnic table and and taking pictures of the uh, <coughs> scenery there was cool. So afterwards, he uh, I mean a total stranger, uh, mind you. Afterwards, he 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 mentioned about the possibility of me getting a uh, DLSR camera, which is uh, uh, digital. Uh, single lens reflex camera, and I said, well, I said to him, I said, well, I think that, you know this camera is good enough. He didn't see anything else for a few minutes, and then he said, uh, he said, but you really need to, you really need to get your DSLR. He said, but the only thing about that is, if you get one, you're going to have to take classes. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm busy. I'm a pastor and author and columnist, and you know, <clears throat> involved in all things and. I just didn't see where I would have time to uh, to take classes. I knew I, I wouldn't be able to take classes, so I kind of brushed it off. So as I'm driving back home, I think about it. Long story short, three days later, I had a DLSR, and it's been uh, it's been uh, it's been an adventure ever since then. Uh, and the camera I bought was a bundle package, which means it came with. Uh, it came with uh, the body, the and two lenses. One of the lenses was for like landscape, and other was for uh, was a zoom lens, more like for wildlife and things like that. Well, it was the uh, it was during that time when I after I received that uh, bundle package with that zoom lens that I became interested in photographing wildlife, mainly birds. Whatever bird if, if it flew, I wanted to photograph it. I mean, I was just so excited, and so I had a notion that. Once I, once I get, now that I have all this equipment, that all I got to do is just go out there and start photographing birds. Well, it, 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 don't, it don't work like that. I mean, it's like they, uh, they don't just sit there and, and, and pose for you. you. I had to learn to, uh, I had to learn their behavior, had to study them, and kind of be able to anticipate their next move. But the more I photographed birds, the more interested I became in just, just up in my game. I wanted the the tough stuff. I mean, the, the bluebirds and the, the blue jays, the corners and the 
Mark and Bruce, that was all cool, but but I want to step it up. I always, I, I, I always, I, I love a challenge. So I started visiting Paradise uh, Fish and Public Area up in Enigma, Georgia, and they had a they have a variety of birds up there: egrets, uh, uh, great blue herons, uh, eagles, uh, hawks, uh, ospreys, you name it. So. That's what I wanted to do. That's so I started photographing them, and it, it uh, probably it, it, within in 2019, I believe, a few months after I, I received my, uh, my my equipment. Uh, but it was it was a, it was a real challenge because uh, they don't just sit still for you to photograph them. They fly, mm -hmm. and you have to learn. I had to learn how to. Uh, Anticipate their next their next move, and that took many hours of st in the field of studying the behavior. I mean, rather it was hot, it was cold, it was the insects and all that. I mean, uh, uh, and what people see is just a photograph, but they mm -hmm. don't understand what it what it what I what it takes to get those photographs. You don't just walk out there and start taking photos. Mm -hmm. And I even wanted to photograph the uh, and I did snakes uh, before I began. Photograph of my life, I was absolutely terrified of snakes. It, just to see them on the TV will make me uh, my skin crawl. But once I start photographing uh, wildlife, uh, I start looking for snakes, mm -hmm. uh, rattlesnakes. I, uh, I have photos where I've gotten on the ground and photographing from ground level. Of course, I got I have this zoom lens. I don't get that close, but uh, but they, they felt, either they fascinated me. Uh, but on average, I spend, since 2019, I spend on average 10 to 16 hours per week in the field mm. uh, photographing. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's just so much in the photography for me. There is, being out in nature, is, I get exercise because I walk. I get a chance to communicate with God because it's quiet out there. It's just so very, so very peaceful. Uh, but so I look, I look forward to uh, uh, being out in the wildlife. Well, my wife, she recent, recently took a cruise. And uh, yesterday I went out in the field and came back, I think it was yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago, I went down to Brumsey, which I go down about once a week. And she asked me, how was it? I said, it was, it was my cruise. Mm -hmm. And she, it took a minute to figure out what I was talking about it, but, but, but really, it was. Uh, I spent about eight hours down there. I think it was Tuesday, and it was just a real adventure. I just really enjoyed myself. I mean, I got some great photos, but it wasn't all about the photos. It was just being out there. Uh, but anyway, my goal as a photographer, and I think most of photographers will agree that we are never satisfied. But my goal as a photographer is to be better than I was the last time I was out there. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that, uh, uh, it's, it's just how you heights. And, and I'm, never, I'm never satisfied. I can get some great pictures. I can have three hours of getting great pictures. And then there's that one picture that, that eludes me and it kind of ruins my day. But then I have to tap myself on the shoulder and, and give God thanks for what, for what, I, you know, what I've already captured. But uh, we, we're just never really satisfied. Uh, and for those that have an interest in photography, you might place most of the emphasis on your equipment, but I can tell you now, it's misplaced interest because the greatest asset that you can take out into the field when it comes to wildlife photography is patient. Mm -hmm. You have to wait. I mean, that's just the way it go. Uh, you're not just going to run out there and jump out and start taking pictures. You've got to wait. Even when you don't see anything, you wait. Because my philosophy is, uh, if I stay there long enough, something will happen. And guess what? Something always happens. But you got to have the patience. That's especially, when it, uh, especially true when it comes down to wildlife. Now, when it comes down to landscaping, getting beautiful landscape pictures, I'm going to show you some in a, in a, in a few minutes. Uh, you have to have an eye for it. I mean, I mean, art is all is all around us, uh, but we overlook it unless you have an eye for it. And I, 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 I credit God for this, but I have an eye for it. 
you know, where other people pass by and just see it. just a pond and some, you know, trees. Well, I see art. When I look up in the sky, it's not just the moon there. It's not just the the sun and the clouds and the rays from the sun. It's art. Mm -hmm. And I've just been able, I've been blessed to be able to capture it. So that's, uh, that, that what, that's what makes me. But just remember this art is all around you. I mean, it's, you can step outside. I can step outside and find something interesting to photograph. That being said, I'm still in training. Uh, I don't, I don't see that changing. I, I've, I'm constantly sharing what I know with other uh, photographers. Some, some been doing this longer than I have, but they haven't been doing wildlife. You know, we learn from one from another. I learn settings from one, and and another one might learn. Uh, you know, where do I need to go to get photograph spoonbills or whatever? Uh, what setting do I need for this? What set? You know, so we help one another, and we it's like a brotherhood. Uh, some days, you, you, uh, again, you, you have slow days, uh, but again, my philosophy is if I stay there, something is going to happen. And yesterday I took one of the most interesting photos I've ever taken, and I'll show you that one later on. But right now I want to show you some, some of the uh, pictures that I've uh, I've, I've, I've taken, and by the way, I, put, my, I post on my Facebook page, Harvey Jr. Williams, you have to spell the junior out, Harvey Jr. Williams, I post on there daily, so if you want to see some of my work, you can visit me there. Uh, but here, this is one of my pride photos right here, this eagle, uh, I took this on Jekyll Island. Uh, the eagles on Jekyll are, 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 are more friendly, uh, people friendly. The ones over in uh, uh, Benham County, they, they, they are very moody. They may hang around a minute, let you photograph them. But this guy right here, uh, I actually have a photograph of him. This guy here nodding and actually sleeping. So he's just so, he's just so comfortable with me, I guess. But uh, this is one of my prize uh, photos right here. Now this one right here, it takes, uh, it, you know, it, it didn't, it didn't, I didn't just jump out there and take this, it's, it, it, over time I was able to work my way up to this and you can see the details, you know, it's pretty sharp and all that because I'm, I'm really learning the camera, but, you know, uh, but this one on the other hand here, if you're interested in photography, this is a very simple picture and believe it or not, this one was taken with uh, my ca a camera phone. So although I do have my DSLR, I have not abandoned my uh, camera phone. And I know I'm giving some secrets to some of the photographers, but uh, I'm just being honest about it. But this right here was taken in an abandoned house. Uh, and again, I like a challenge, and I don't necessarily uh, uh, recommend you go some of the places I go, but to get the unique shots, you gotta kind of take a chance. And, and again, I like a challenge and I kind of you know, like a three or two, and but most I thank God is with me when I go. So, but this right here is a very simple uh, photo right here. I, I think I probably captioned it, named it, titled it, uh, uh, when silence speak. And by the way, I always caption my photos. If I if I put them on Facebook, uh, the, there's a caption on there. There's a title, and if I can't get a title. I don't, I don't post a picture. Because in every photo, for me, there's a message. Mm -hmm. I just gotta find it. Sometimes I take 15 minutes and sometimes I'm tired and I just shut it down for the day, come back at it tomorrow, but there's a message in every photo that I take. Okay, now, this one right here, I'm not sure what I captioned it, but that right there, I don't know how I got this. Because to be honest with you, sometimes I'll take photos and I have no idea what I have until I upload it to the computer. But when I saw this and the colors and everything, I said, wow, this is a, this is a nice shot. This one right here is taken on St. Andrews. Beach 
on Jekka Island uh, a couple of months ago. This eagle here, believe it or not, I was able to get within 30 feet. He had flown down from a tree and was perched on a piece of driftwood near the beach, probably 40 feet from the beach, the, from the water. And he just sat there. And I started photographing him probably 300 feet uh, away and was able to get within probably, probably uh, 30, 40 feet maybe, something like that. And he just sat there. So I really wanted to take a photo of him flying off, but then it, it had been so nice to me, I didn't want to harass it. So I gradually just backed off and just backed away and just left him alone. This one right here was taken uh, on Jekka as well. It's a place called The Wharf. Uh, it's a restaurant. That's a restaurant right there. But I was looking. This is what I went for. This boat and I and the and I saw the the colors and you know when I looked at the colors, I, I uh, uh, imagine what it would be like in a print and the sun, of course. And uh, this was one of my one of one of my nicest photos of. Uh, a sunset, especially with a with a swamp boat there. It does not get any more simple than this right here. Just a, just just a just, it's just a feather mm -hmm. floating in the water, and I saw it. I saw the beauty in that, so I got to get that. Now, what's simpler, more simple than the the feather I just showed you, is this ripple these rippers in the water. I mean, the average person all by, big deal, ripple. I mean, they think, well, it's just a fish or something in the water. But to me, it was art, and I had to capture it. Oh, and this one, wow. For over a year, I wanted to photograph spoonbills. They are very skittish. They don't hang around. They, they don't just uh, feed side road. These guys here was in tall bush, probably 30, 40, 30 feet thick. And when I say tall, I'm talking about uh, uh, over my head. I'm having to uh, push the brush away, but that's not the most, that's not probably not the most thrilling thing about it. I had to swat those big spiders, I think they call them banana spiders, and they had to spot, uh, swap those away. Uh, I even had them crawling on my glasses, one crawled down my back. But with the adrenaline rush, I had to get this because I didn't know if I had enough opportunity. So with the adrenaline rush, the spiders uh, uh, didn't bother me at all. It was no big deal. You know, I had to get these pictures right here, spoon bills. Now, you remember I was talking a few minutes ago about me living in the country and being the only kid out there? Well, this is the part of the country that I was, uh, where I was living at. And I, I'm the kind of the person that I don't forget where I come from. And I uh, went back, had to go back and capture some of this beauty. So this is uh, the Gaskins Farm in, uh, in Atkinson County. Who pays attention to railroads? Who ever thought railroads could be so neat? Well, I do. I mean, again, art and beauty is, is where you, you know, it, it's all around you. You, you just got to find it, you know, and uh, bring out the uniqueness in it. And photos do just that. Again, this is another feather. Uh, I think the nice piece of art. Very simple. Believe it or not, I actually prayed to be able to get a shot like this. I had been watching ospreys splash down and uh, catch fish, but I was always too far away to get a good close-up shot. So there was this one evening, it was dark, and I saw this osprey flying over. Uh, 
took, photo, uh, took a photo of it, but it was dark, so I said, but I'm not going to bother, I won't be able to see anything. And then I saw this guy take a, 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 dive, cur a dive change, I know you have to uh, know, you have to be out there to know what I'm talking about, but he goes from uh, uh, flying till he, start, he starts to dive. So I know then he's, he's after something. So I just happened to pos uh, uh, position my camera just right as he hits the water, grabs the fish. He, he's totally submerged under the water, but he, when, he's, uh, when he surfaced, he's, uh, uh, he's got that fish. And this is one of my prized photos right here. This, one, this photo right here, it reminds me of me. It's not me. But this guy was like I was to stay on uh, Driftwood Beach. He was waiting for the sun to set. And I didn't know what I had until I uh, uploaded to com the computer. It was uh, colorized, but I, I thought it would be better in black and white. So that's what, uh, what made it black and white. This one, if you're going to Tifton, uh, if you head west to Tifton from Willacoochee, where I live, uh, you pass by this all the time. This place all the time is going to be over on the left-hand side. Uh, by the way, I do trespass quite a bit. Uh, you know, I have a prayer about that, but to get the shot, again, I'm, I, I guess I'm a, somewhat of a daredevil, but to get the shot, you got to take the chances. So, uh, so far, I haven't been threatened or anything like that. But because I'm usually in and out real quick, it don't take long to take a photo. But this right here, I, I want to capture this right here. Interesting story on this one. I had been on Driftwood Beach uh, probably about five hours, and I had grown. We were I had taken some pictures, up, but I was just had to say, "Well, I'm getting ready to go. I'm, I, I'm going to go home now." And as I was walking to the truck, a guy drove up. He said, uh, "Harry, right?" I said, no, Harvey. He said, well, I met you at the, uh, the Coastal Photographers Guild the other night. And he said, what are you up to? I said, well, I was looking for an eagle, but I hadn't seen it. And he said, well, I can show you what you got. So he said, at, he said, it's about uh, a half a mile. So oh, no, no problem at all. But anyway, as we were, we were walking, he walks ahead of me because I'm photographing something else. And I just happened to see this, see this image right here. And I call it the man on the beach, you know. This right here is that elusive spoonbill. You know, the ones I'd show you in the bushes that was on the trees and the ones that I had to swat the flower, the, the spiders to get to. Well, this is the uh, spoonbill. I was able to, uh, took a few weeks, but I was able to gain enough confidence to get close enough to be able to give a shot like this. Uh, one of my favorite shots right here. And I'm gonna close with this photo right here. I had a print up this morning, a couple of hours ago, by the way. Uh, just yesterday, I was in the field uh, taking photos, I call it in the field. Very slow day, and I, and I thought I said, well, I've gotten all I'm going to get. I, I'm I'm just going to, uh, I just I, I'm just going to leave. Uh, but again, my motto, my philosophy is, if you if you wait long enough, if you stay long enough, something will happen. And so I said, okay, well, I give it a few more minutes, and I just happened to look up. And when I looked up, I saw the moon, you know, which was visible, probably about four or five o'clock, something like that, yesterday. And there's these buzzers of watchers that's uh, probably 15 or 20, just circling around and they moving back and forth. And then I get the idea then, uh, what is one, what's one or more get in front of that moon there? You know, and so 20 minutes, no exaggeration, for 20 minutes, I watched and I pray and I talk to these buzzers to get in front of the moon so I could get that shot. And I didn't get it in the center of the moon, uh, but I did get what I think was uh, is an incredible shot. 
and I will stay there for another 15 minutes, and, and I got other photos that's similar to this one right here. So <laughs> photography is something that you don't have to be intimidated by. Uh, people often tell me, ask me, uh, well, what do I need to do? You know, I don't, uh, it's, it's complicated. Well, you, what you do is you get the camera, and you go out there, and you go to work. You're going to make mistakes, but you're learning from your mistakes. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Uh, I've been given an offer to teach a class at the Wiregrass uh, Photographers Guild, uh, going to hone my skills a little bit more, and probably in uh, um, spring, somewhere in spring, I'll probably start uh, give a class, you know, three or four classes, however, but because uh, I'm anxious to, to share to, to share with others what's been shared with me, uh, at least 50, maybe 60 percent of what I know, I learn from other people. Uh, what kind of camera to get, uh, where to go to shoot the photos, the settings, and that type of thing. So I'm anxious to share what I know with others. I mean, it's like, a, like again, the photography is it's like a, it's like a brotherhood. We help one another. And I hope I have been helpful to you in some manner. Uh, if I can be further assistant, uh, most people know me. I'm affiliated with, uh, with the library here in, uh, in Douglas. I am the uh, vice chairman of the regional, on the regional board and the chairman of the Atkinson County board. So, uh, and again, I can say uh, uh, I'm a columnist for the Atkinson County Citizen newspaper. Uh, I've written several books, uh, uh, so I'm not hard to find. And I am hungry to teach you. Thank you so much for your time. God bless you.